yeah. That's a mix that I recently had up for a doom band called A Mammoth out of uh, Sydney, Australia. My name's Clem Bennett, mix engineer for the Pet Food Factory production team in Australia. And I'm just going to listen to some new toys. Uh, I was fortunate that Joey Sturgis sent me some drum samples from Dave Otero. Dave is the uh, engineer who mixed the latest cattle decapitation record, so I'm assuming that these are going to be metal ready, which is good for us because we get a lot of punk, hardcore, doom, grindcore, and other dirty guitar-based music at Pet Food Factory. Let, let me just find a spot here. I'm going to listen to the toms first because I th think this is most interesting on toms. Now, this is what I had out of the mics. Pretty good. Pretty good, and there's a bit of a tail on those toms too, but, like, you always have to cut them off a bit, fade them out, gate them, because uh, you get a lot of noise coming in, especially cymbal bleed, and, you know, let's turn, for instance, this off and listen to the little track. Hear that? And that's with it already, you know, gated and with frequency-dependent gating on it. And this means that those big lush blooms of 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 tail end on our drums um, gets lost. So maybe, just uh, just maybe, let's get this here. Maybe if we add one of these lovely new samples. Here we go. Um, we're using uh, we're using trigger. I'm, I'm using the uh, trigger app for my samples. And here is one that I chose, the Yamaha Oak 10-inch. Listen to it soloed. Right by itself, you wouldn't really replace it. Um, look at this. Listen to how much uh, front end is on that, right? Here's the uh, Yamaha Birch 10-inch, that's the dry version. Here's the Smack Enhancer version. If you listen to that, it sounds like the Smack Enhanced version has got, um, let's hear it. It's got a lot of compression on it, which is bringing up the, uh, the, the back end of it, but also uh, really enhancing that uh, front transient part. I found that this drum here fit in well tonally. I had to change the uh, yeah the tuning of it, pushed it up a little bit so it sounded right. But I found this smack enhanced version had a better tail, like a bigger tail, a bigger better tail. But I did, then I didn't like all that front end stuff. I mean, sometimes you use a. Uh, a sample to add attack at front end, but in this case, it's the tail end that I want. So I went into Transify and there you go, I, I took out most of the attack in the top end. And I've, we've still got the sound of the, of the natural drum, but we've just got a much longer decay, a lovely rich decay. So here's, here's the uh, second rack. Not very inspiring, that second rap. Well, it sounded good in the mix, but I think we can really help out the, the back end of it here. Uh, let's see. Listen to that. Lovely. Ooh, at the end. By itself, it's a bit machine gunny and, and unnatural, but you know, in the mix, it's great. So this is a 12-inch Birch Yamaha that he's, he's, um, that Dave has sampled. Um, this is the dry version. And again, he did a smack enhanced version, which, with all that compression. So I've gone and done the same thing and, um, used the compressed version for a big tail end and used Transify again. 
So that's just the, that's with it. That's without it. And I haven't even gone in and, and done any EQ or compression or any of that sort of thing to it yet. So let's listen to the floor tom. Here it is. That's even, kind of even more choked. You can hear there's noise in there that I was uh, choking out of it as well. But now listen to that. Now we've got a lot longer tail on it and yeah. It's got a nice bow mid-range uh, element to it too, that, that sample. Again, that's a smack enhanced version of a, a more compressed version, essentially. This is a, uh, the other one. There was another, uh, the Yamaha Birch 14 inch, it says there. If we take Transify off, you can hear all of that um, front end, but in this case, of course, I'm not looking to, uh, to ex ex extend the amount of transient attack. So, this is a Yamaha Oak 15 inch. By itself, that Oak 15 inch, that Yamaha 15 inch sounds great. Oh, there's a lot of richness though in that um, in that birch 14 inch. Interestingly, they're the same note, even though they're a different size drum. Yeah, sounds good. Listen to that whole kit together. Take them out. in yep oh sorry I was uh, that brought in my uh, snare and kick sample as well now let's put the reverb onto them oh yeah excessive beautifully excessive that's a cathedral reverb uh, like a three second cathedral all of that worked those um those samples are great on the so far and i haven't even done any eq or or compression to them and now we're gonna listen to our kick right so that's our kick in microphone it's actually got a bit of length on it and a bit of it's pretty thumpy it's click is quite low, a bit papery. This one's got more of a, a slightly higher click in the four to six K section. This is a different kick, the gut kick, he's called this. Quite short, actually. It'd be really good for blast beats or something. Yep, use that for faster music. This sleigh kick I quite like. Oh, the smack enhanced one has a lot of good, well, it's got all the front end you'd want if you wanted to add some. But maybe a bit too much for this doom band. Now look at this. Or listen to this. So he's gone and put a reverb in there as well, which we could use. But um, in this case, I've chosen a big reverb. And I'm sending the, the kick to that. I did a little bit of production on it there. And we'll send it to the verb. Yeah, it's subtle, um, but it helps. It helps put, put it in a room with the rest of the drum kit. You don't want to put too much reverb on a kick drum. 
but you're allowed to do a lot of naughty things when you when you're mixing doom. So that really beefed up the kick, huh? Hell yeah. Now we're listening to the snare. I'll keep the kick in, why not? That snare top sound is actually very good. I like that snare. I mean, could have lived with that. No worries. I had to... Look what happens if you turn up the top end. You get all this hi-hat. There's quite a lot of hi-hat bleed, and I would like a bunch of top end sizzle, some rattle. Now the snare bottom, I chose not to use it in this case. We have, let's hear it. It's a bit messy and it's, and it's picking up a lot, of, uh, a lot of kick drum spill. You hear that? And it's sort of rattling a bit when the kick drum is being hit. So I need to get some sizzle and maybe a little bit more thump as well. So I want sizzle, I want snap. See, this thing's called the doom hammer. I had to use it. It's called the doom hammer. Now that's got some sizzle. Not as much actually with the smack enhanced version, but that is so long. It's actually a bit more sizzly, that first one, but this one's just got length. And here's a deep, there's a reverb here. Goes for days. I mean, I thought I'd put a big reverb on the drums, but I mean, listen to this. That was a cathedral reverb I was using. I thought that was radical, but um, that's tame compared to Dave's one. I really like sending the snare reverb from the sample because listen to this, I'm sending it from the snare top but all of that mush and spill and stuff from the hi-hat is going to it as well. But if you send your, uh, if you go to your reverb send from a sample then it's, it's a lot cleaner. We don't have all that mush floating around. So far, so good. These samples are working in this. I'm going to be using these again. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Dave.